Hello, everyone. We would like to get started if everyone's ready. Uh, my name is Raven, and I am one of the volunteers uh, for Pi Data Seattle, as well as a member of the organizing committee for this conference. Um, so this tutorial is titled Hands-On Intro of iPi Vizu Story, a new open source charting tool to build, create, and share animated data stories with Python in Jupyter. In this tutorial, uh, one of the creators I have right next to me um, will introduce their technology and help the audience take uh, the first steps in utilizing the power of animation in data storytelling. Um, this tutorial will provide a direct practical experience for the audience, so it will be a hands-on tutorial. Um, there will be time um, to get into groups or individually to actually workshop this technology. And then at the end of the workshop, there will also be room for presentations. So uh, participants can show the stories they built and also receive feedback. So I'd like to introduce Peter Vidosh to you. Uh, Peter is the CEO and co-founder of Vizu. His primary focus is understanding how Vizu's innovative approach to data visualization can be put to good use. Listening to people complaining about their current huddles, hurdles with building charts and pre presenting them is his main obsession, next to figuring out how to help data professionals utilize the power of animation in data viz. Peter has been involved with digital product development for over 15 years. Earlier products and projects he worked on cover mobile app testing, online analytics, data visualization, decision support, e-learning, educational administration, and social. Still, building a selfie teleport just for fun is what he likes to boast about when asked about previous experiences. So please help me uh, give a warm welcome to Peter. Hello, everyone. I hope my mic works. Does it? Yes. Great, great. First things first. So thanks very much for having me. I'm, I'm so glad that so many of you came. Uh, I've never had a workshop with, with so many participants. And since uh, we're developing this uh, all the time, uh, there are new content coming up. So there, there's going to be a lot of things that, that we do here for the first time. And uh, as you can imagine, with a new technology, you can expect things to break, to not work properly, uh, to, have, to have issues with that. Uh, and and I, you know, I try to prep in a way that, that I can still help you go through these painful points. And actually, there are some colleagues of mine uh, back in Hungary, which is uh, in a nine-hour time difference. So it's, it's 8 o'clock in the evening for them. Uh, who are prepared on Slack uh, to help you out uh, if, if you, you get stuck. Uh, so um, yeah, first of all, a couple of uh, questions to, to you know, get to know you a little better. Uh, how many of you are working as data scientists uh, right now? Please, hands up, like uh, half of the room. How many of you use uh, computational notebooks, uh, like, I don't know, regularly, uh, like Jupyter? Mm -hmm. Almost everyone, that's great. Uh, how, many, when, how many of you have to, have to present uh, your findings, so contents from a notebook, to somebody that's not a data scientist, say a business stakeholder, uh, very regularly? Hands up. Uh, I guess like 50%, 50-ish. How many of you, and since we're on Microsoft premises, this question is a little awkward, but still I have to ask, how many of you screenshot your plots that are in the notebook and then just copy and paste them into PowerPoint uh, to show them. OK, it so looks like the same amount of person almost that have to present this. That's, that's the most uh, practical way of doing that. So I, I, I totally understand. Uh, and uh, yeah, how many of you use Streamlit regularly to build apps? Hands up. Mm, like three, four people, OK. and. Uh, Lastly, how many of you have heard about Vizu before coming to this workshop? Uh, one, two person, two people. Great, I, I love uh, to, to introduce our tool to new people. So the, the, as, as Raven uh, said, the, the way I plan it to go down is uh, to talk a bit and then to give you the floor and, and help you go through the, the painful process of learning something new. Uh, I, my, my intention here is to, to really just help you get through these, these initial steps 
that are, are usually hard to take when, when you're getting acquainted with some new technology. Uh, but first, a little bit of background, like why we have this animated charting tool that runs uh, in, in the computational notebooks and actually in Streamlit now as well. So basically what we have is a generic chart morpher. Uh, it, uh, it uses the same logic uh, to encode all different types of charts. And because it does so, I mean, Visu, this engine, uh, it can interpolate between the charts that are expressed on its interface. Um, first logical question would be, like, why on earth anyone wants to build such a thing other than making a cool animation like this? I would say effortlessly, but we have to build the engine in the background. So after we were done with that, the, the animation was, uh, was easy to build. The reason for that is we have a vision. We have a vision to build a graphical user interface for data. Uh, it's actually not intended for professionals like you, but for people using Excel. Uh, we, we want to enable them to be able to explore data visually, uh, to tell stories of the data, and, and actually build animated data stories as a byproduct of their analysis, to reuse these views of data sets in reports and dashboards, and also to use them as uh, for forecasting and, 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 uh, and planning, which is nice, but we're still not there yet. What we have is this engine that is more flexible than, than anything we've met so far, frankly, and that can be used for, for certain purposes. Um, like, for example, data storytelling is the most uh, like, uh, profound or the most straightforward utilization or use case for, for our technology and uh, especially for those who can code as of this point. A little bit of history, so in 2020 and 2021, we developed the core engine, which is in C++. We used it in-house to build data stories and interactives with it. In September 2021, we released our first open source product, which is for JavaScript developers. So basically an open source JavaScript uh, charting tool with which you can build interactives and, and animated data stories. And then roughly a year ago, uh, we ended up uh, starting to focus on, on you guys. So on, on people, uh, on data scientists, on people with experience in, with Python, and that's when we released uh, one of the tools that I'm going to uh, show you today called IPyVisu. And there were a couple of strong feedbacks we received initially, uh, which was about like, okay, it's nice, but how can I use it? And uh, so pretty soon we re released an extension to it called IPyVisu Story that enables you to build, present, and share animated data stories uh, within computational notebooks, uh, such as a Jupyter Notebook. And, and you know, that's how I ended up here, because it turned out that uh, even though you still uh, copy and paste, uh, or screenshot and paste charts from computational notebooks. Some of you uh, have shown interest, and, and the organizers of this conference also shown interest in, in what we do. And, uh, and, and you know, I just try to spread the word and understand uh, how our thing can be more useful uh, for people like you. Uh, again, we are an early stage company, so actually uh, the two, two of my co-founders and myself are full-time on this project. There are a couple of people helping us out. So as you can imagine, uh, we, we have challenges in, in, in making it a fully-fledged, uh, production-ready uh, thing. But, but I think we've come uh, quite along the way. And, and lucky for us, we've been uh, we, coming very close to closing an additional uh, funding round in, in the next uh, month or so. So uh, why do we want animated charts? That's another logical question. Uh, to our understanding, static charts are quite abstract. Uh, you have to, and especially people without your expertise, uh, have to always understand uh, what they see and make the connection between different views of the same data set. So like, for example, these four charts show the same data set. And, uh, and if I connect them via animation, then the connection between these views is, is obvious. You don't have to think about it. Whereas with the original uh, static way, uh, you, know, you have to explain what's on the chart. Or as a non-expert, you, you have to like, understand each and every view and, and try to make the connection between the views in your head. Some of these uh, use cases, so things that you can show using animation, you can drill down and show components of a composite index, for example, and, and show the, the difference of a component uh, to, to a 
yeah, more composite part. Uh, you can you can uh, show part to whole and and show if if uh, like one element is going against a trend. Um, you can these are just example. You can you can switch between aggregation and distribution again very intuitively. These are all things you can do with the current tool. You can show change over time, like using this uh, this racing bar chart. Uh, these were so popular a couple of years back that they were banned from the Data is Beautiful subreddit because basically everybody was posting things like this there. And uh, you can actually turn one chart into a whole story. So this one shows, uh, the initial pie chart showed the, uh, the number of smartphones different companies are selling. And then we added the, the, the revenue they generate, uh, which is obviously uh, uh, like it separates these companies into, into, super, into different classes. And, and you have a sense of magnitude uh, compared, comparing Apple to basically any other company uh, that, that, produce, that is producing smartphones. Um, we have a lot of integrations already uh, with, with notebooks, with, uh, with, with uh, yeah, softwares coming out from uh, the Anaconda uh, ecosystem like Panel and PyScript uh, with a BI tool like Mode. And, and I think the most interesting one is that we have with Streamlit. I will show you a couple of examples of why I think that. And without further ado, let's get down to coding and, and seeing you know, actual use cases of, of uh, of IPyVisu. If you go to this link, I also added it in the uh, talk notes, or not, like you can find it in the schedule. Uh, it will uh, get, so it's bit.ly uh, and uh, visu hyphen pydata hyphen Seattle. So, and if you follow the link, you'll end up in this, uh, this repo folder uh, at visu HQ slash visu workshops. This is a specific folder I set up for you. There's a warm welcome there because I'm happy that you're here and that you're there as well. And then there are a couple of links and you have all the notebooks that I'm going to show you in the notebooks folder. Uh, some of them are for presentational purposes and some of them for you to, to fiddle along, okay? Any questions until now? At any, time, any point in time, by the way, if you have a question, just raise your hand and, and, and I'm happy to, to hear you out. Uh, just like Raven said, I, I really want this to be interactive and I don't have any problem with being, uh, being uh, interrupted. And I can talk for more than 90 minutes about Visu and that's definitely not my intention. So please uh, interrupt me. Okay, so IPyVisu, the basic logic of IPyVisu, it uses a single method called the animate method. Uh, you call it once and then it will uh, get, give you a static chart. You call it once again with a different uh, configuration and then it will animate that chart to the new state that you've just described. So it's pretty straightforward. It has uh, three args or objects, the data, so you add the data to your charts, uh, the configuration of the charts and the styling, and optionally you can uh, you can fiddle with the animation options. You can change those as well. Uh, we we really try to make the animation as smooth and and easy to follow as we can, depending on the different settings of the charts. But it doesn't mean we're right all the time. And as you can imagine, this thing has a huge parameter space. So there are a lot of different settings where we might not made a good job. And, and uh, you know, in that case, just play with the animation settings and, and let us know uh, how, how we should make them better. Or th yeah, there, there can be other, other uh, like cases when you need that. First example, the Titanic data set. You can install our thing using pip or conda and it actually works with a pandas data frame. So uh, here I'm going to just uh, import pandas and import the chart data config and style from ipyvisu as you can see and uh, read a CSV file. That's the Titanic data set that I assume most of you are very familiar with. We just added one column uh, called count which is uh, the, the value one uh, in each row. And then we uh, create the data object here and add the data frame to the data object. Uh, and then you can see the contents here. So first we create an empty chart by creating an object and, and then setting uh, the width and the height of it. Depending on what kind of notebook you're using, you might need to have different settings. So I would encourage you to go to ipyvisit.com uh, if, you, if you need to set something up and then go for, uh, uh, like here is the environments section 
and uh, there are the notebooks. So it's ipyvisu.com will take you to this documentation site. And within the notebooks, you can see plenty of different notebooks and other platforms uh, with, with detailed examples, like detailed instructions and how to make it work. So I'm, I'm not sure what kind of notebook you're using, but this is the way to go forward uh, if, you, if you want to uh, you know, try and, and use what we have here. And let's build our first chart. So I let you in on a secret. The default geometry of the elements that are being shown is rectangular elements. And we are going to just add the count, so you know, one per passenger to the x-axis, and then the sex of the passengers to the y-axis, and also the count on the label of the markers. What do you think we'll end up with? What kind of chart we will have? Any guesses? Bar chart. Horizontal bar chart. Um, yeah, you're right. So if I run this cell, you know, the, the, the count is on the x-axis. Uh, ah, yeah, that's, that's what I was looking for. And then the, the sex is on the y-axis, and that's it. Uh, next up, I'm going to uh, call the animate method once again and add the, the survived category uh, again on the x-axis and also on the color of the markers. These are channels here. And uh, yeah, IPyVisu will simply just animate to this new state where we have this stacked bar chart. Uh, the, the, um, these bars have been split whether by uh, the, this category, whether the, uh, this passenger died or survived. And uh, lastly, I'm just going to remove the survived category from the x-axis and add it to the y-axis in, in the last step, uh, which means that the categories will be listed on the y-axis and we will have a grouped bar chart instead of the stacked chart. A couple of things to notice here. So even though we had, we had this continuous uh, uh, like data series, uh, the count, uh, IPyVisu automatically aggregated that. So we have a couple of uh, passengers who were female and died, who were female and survived and whatnot, and, and uh, everyone has the value of one, and IPyVisu just automatically aggregated uh, this count value, and that's what's uh, represented by the width of the bars, and it's also shown on, on the markers because we added, to the we added it to the label channel. Um, in the configuration part, and firstly, we're going to focus on this thing. There are a couple of other things you can set. For example, the geometry, uh, the geometric elements used to represent the data. I'm just going to uh, turn it to circle and rerun the cell. And now, instead of the bars, we have circles. And because we have circles, we can add something to the size of these circles. We're going to add the same value, the count. And as you can see now, uh, the, the horizontal position and also the, the, the size of the circles represent the same value. And we can even uh, switch the coordinate system from Euclidean, which is the default value, to polar to end up with a chart that make no sense, or at least is very hard to understand. That's, that's what you get when you have a generic charting engine, right? You, you can build a lot of different types of charts that, uh, that people might not uh, understand, and, and they are just not very widely used and thus uh, understood. But, but that's fine. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure uh, you will notice, and, and you have, uh, most of the data scientists I had the chance to, to have a discussion about uh, Visu and charts with uh, were very familiar with the, you know, the familiar chart types and wanted to only use those because they, know that, they knew that uh, that's what business people will also understand. So I'm guessing you won't use this thing. So the configuration part, which is the most important one, we have the axis, X and Y. We have some channels, color, label, size, and lightness. And uh, so you can actually add any number of categorical series to these axes and channels and one continuous series. And you have endless opportunities to, to come up with different types of charts. And then we have other parameters like uh, the geometry that I just showed you. Um, we have the coordinate system, Cartesian or Euclidean. Uh, you can sort uh, in certain settings uh, by value uh, the, 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 the elements that are being shown. You can align them differently. You can add the title. We, we already used that. So here uh, we added the title Passengers of the Titanic. And then you know, it, it, it was kept uh, to the very end. And there's another option called splitting that I'm going to show you. So basically, another thing to remember is that uh, IPyVisu will only change the parameters of the chart that you explicitly change when you call the method. 
Like, so for example, uh, the, the uh, sex was on the y-axis by default, and when I change the category and the value on the x-axis, the, the, the value on the y-axis remained there. Or I set the title in the initial step, and, and it's still there even after the third step. It, it's this, it works the same. It employs the same logic with styling, with data, with everything. You only change what you explicitly change, OK? Uh, that, that's about it. Now, I know that this intro session or this intro part can be a little fuzzy, right? How should I know what kind of geometric elements to use and in what way to build a bubble plot or to build a violin chart or, you know, these are not connected. But uh, bear with me in the next bit, uh, in the next part of this, I will show you uh, chart presets that actually do this specific thing. So starting with uh, a chart type and then just filling in the blanks uh, to build those with, with IPy Visual. But first, I'd really like you to get some sense of the configuration part and, and have some fun with that. So this is the Playground 1 uh, notebook that you can find in the notebooks folder. I would definitely encourage you to, to start playing with that. Uh, it uses a data set that contains information about every country in the world. Uh, and their population uh, from 1953 to 2098. Uh, we have data point for every five years. Uh, we have a period data that tells us if that uh, data is from the past or if it's a forecast. And uh, we also, for the forecasted data, we have uh, the three scenarios. So population medium, high, and low. This is all from the UN's population forecasts. And, uh, and if, you, if you go to this notebook, uh, like, yeah, there. Here we can just we just create an empty chart and I add some styling features. You don't have to deal with those. I repeated all the information about the configuration here, and then I added some cells here that you can basically play with. Just be feel free to change from area to circle to line to area uh, to switch the coordinate system to switch the value being shown, and in the next cell again to to change different settings of the charts just so that you understand uh, what you end up with. I'll give you a couple of minutes for those of you who have a laptop in front of you and would be happy to give it a go. And then in the meantime, uh, if any of you have some questions, just let me know. Let, let's say you have, I don't know, two, three minutes to start, try it with different settings. And uh, if you have any issues, so something doesn't come up, so first thing is um, go and join our Slack channel, uh, which uh, you will find the link in the, uh, uh, the iPad is intro. I should have put it here. but. If, if you click on the Slack link, it will invite you to our Slack. Then if you post anything in the help channel, if something is not right, my colleagues will, will help you out right away. And um, also, um, yeah, basically that's about it. Uh, how many of you would actually want to give it a try right now, this example notebook? Uh, please, hands up. OK, there are around 20 people. Great. The floor, so it's, it's all yours. Uh, it, I, I hope it's going to work well for you. If not, get, get on Slack or raise your hand, and I'll try and come and help you out. Any questions right now? OK, none so far. So yeah, uh, to, then to give you some examples that I, I, I just showed here, uh, you know, if you change, and, and for those of you who are not playing with it, so if you change the population medium to population low, for example, and rerun this, then you know, we, we will see a different forecast uh, that, than, than we originally did. Uh, I now change it to population high. And, and yet that's yet another forecast. Uh, you can change. So now it's, it's an area chart. You can turn it back to rectangle, which will be a column chart. You can turn it to circle, what, whatever you want. I, I won't use the polar coordinate system because it won't make any sense right now as well. You know, in pie charts, with, with donut charts, with, with, with uh, yeah, Nightingale, the polar coordinate system is great. But otherwise, it's not that, not that common. Uh, and, and in the next bit, uh, I just add the region, which is sort of like continent, uh, to the y-axis and also on the color. So now we will see uh, the color, uh, the, the, uh, the different, so the population forecasts for different uh, regions on the screen. 
interestingly, they are now accumulated. So whenever you're using a circular chart like this one, you might not want uh, to uh, use the, the circular elements. So I'm just going to add the option here and use um, area chart, rerun the cell. Yeah, this makes more sense, right? Uh, this is this is a stacked area chart, and uh, a funny bit part. Uh, I, I told you about the, the the splitting feature. So if I if I turn it on, then we will get to this view, so we can see the components side by side, uh, and and you can you know see the trends of those, and 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 when you turn it off, you can uh, yeah it looks like this. Uh, with the alignment, uh, there are a couple of ways to play with it. So you can align it to the max, which doesn't make so much sense. Yeah, I'll, I'll get, back, get to you in a second. Uh, the most interesting alignment option, I think, is the stretch one, which will switch to percentages instead of values. So it's that easy to switch between values and percentages. Uh, so this was the, the original view that we had. And yeah, with the stretch, we can see the, the, uh, the share of these components. And there was a question back there. Is that right? Where can I find these options? Well, what, uh, I couldn't find it in the documentation. Um, so the question was where you can find these options. So for the configuration options, right? That's, that's what you refer to. Um, I'm, well, we, we have them, but maybe it's not intuitive enough uh, in, the, uh, in the documentation site. So if you go to ipyvisu.com, you'll end up at the same site that I'm right now, where, where I'm now at. And uh, in the tutorial, uh, it actually gives you a step-by-step -step introduction of ipyvisu. So first about the chart settings, then adding data. And then here are the ways to use the axis, the x and the y axis to use the geometric elements within the config part. So it's, it's, it might not be listed as well as, uh, as on this notebook uh, for, for experiment that I put together for experimentation, but you can find all the options here. And also you can check out the code reference, but I think it's not that straightforward. So I would stick to the tutorial and, and these example notebooks that I've put together for you, uh, for starters. Okay, yeah, please. Uh, if I'm happy with the sequence of uh Mm -hmm. Question was, if you like the sequence of animation, how can you export that? So that was uh, one of the questions that we had very regularly initially when we released IPyVisu, and the answer to that is IPyVisu story. So yes, and we are going to get to that very soon. Any more questions right now? Okay, let's move on with some more advanced stuff. Is that okay for you? Cool. So we are going to now use uh, chart presets. I'm going to give you a little bit of introduction into styling, and I'm going to show you how to use filters. Uh, the next data set that we're using contains information about how much revenue different music formats generated over time in the US. Uh, a couple of things again to notice here, and I'm referring back to my original comment about having a small team and building an open source tool and, you know, so first of all, you have to specifically tell uh, IPyVisu that year is a category. Otherwise, it would think it's a value, and we would end up seeing charts that we don't want to see. So whenever you have numerical, numeric values in a data series that are actually categories, and year is the most common example of that, just when you actually read the CSV into the data frame, add this option there, and it will be fine. The other thing you might notice is that I, in the beginning, so this is all arranged uh, from oldest to newest. This is something you have to do with Visu right now, with IPyVisu. And also there are uh, elements here with the value zero. So we have, uh, I don't know, streaming in 1973, sadly didn't generate any revenue. Uh, we, we have to add it there so that we have the right order of the categories. Uh, otherwise, uh, I, the way IPyVisu works is that it, it processes the data frame and uh, we would end up uh, having the categories in the first order, uh, in the order where you know, IPyVisu meets with them from top to bottom, which is a lot harder to, to understand when you want to properly prep and, and visualize your data. So I encourage you to, to as, at least in the top of your data frame, have all your categories listed in the order you want them to appear on the chart. 
with the value zero if they don't have an initial value. That's totally fine. Uh, next step, we create again uh, the, the empty chart here. We, we set the width and the height and we add the data to it. And now we are going to use a preset, a bar chart preset. So we have config.bar. Uh, it looks the same as it was before. So we have X and the Y axis, but we know that it's gonna be a bar chart right now. We have a, lot of, we have a list of presets here. Let me quickly go back to that page. So you can, in the, within the examples category on the documentation site, you will find the preset charts. We have a lot of different chart types, as you can see. And uh, so like lollipop and scatterplot and bubble plot and violin and vertical stream graph and you know whatever. We, we have a lot of different chart types we can work with. And if you click on any of those, uh, you'll get to a sample code uh, how to utilize that chart type. And, uh, and yeah, you can play the creation of the chart once again. And uh, here's some info on how to set up this chart, what kind of data it uses and everything. We, we really wanted to make it easy for you to get started with, with all these different chart types. And, and basically what I did here is I, I told him that I'm going to use a bar chart and right now I have a not very nicely looking bar chart to say the least. Uh, and so uh, what I want, Firstly is to, to have a different uh, color, use the different bar, which is the group bar chart. I just use the group bar uh, preset here, and then I have this option called group by, and I added the format there, and it means that it's going to use a different color for every bar. Still, I don't like the looks of my chart, so that's when the styling thing comes into play. So basically, we have a styling hierarchy, a styling structure uh, that is, looks a little bit like CSS, so it's, it's hierarchical, and you can set plenty of different things like the number format or add a, a unique color palette uh, by adding a list of colors that IPyVisu will employ, um, and yeah, change the font size or whatever. So let me really quickly run this cell, and as you can see, uh, the, the styling changed, the colors are now nicer, uh, the, the numbers are shortened down, they are also applied on the x-axis. And yeah, there are a couple of things you can, you can also change here. So first of all, like, I don't know, you can make the title a little bigger. And as you can see, even the style changes are happening in an animated manner, so it's easier for you to, to understand what you have just changed. You can change, I don't know, the, the font family to Times New Roman, or, uh, or even wingdings, if you want that. Oh yeah, right. that looks nice, doesn't it? And <laughs> yeah, let's switch back to Times New Roman. Now that it's so much better, but at least we can read what's on the screen. Um, you, can, you can change things like the fill opacity of the markers. Uh, you can actually change the background color to make it very ugly, like this one. Um, and, and yeah, and, and a lot of other things like that. So to help you with, with finding the right styling options for you, we have a couple of things. It's, it's not that straightforward, I know, I know. Uh, first of all, you have a Google spreadsheet, um, which is, <laughs> if you go to the IPyVisu settings here, it, it actually has this hierarchy that we use in the settings, and you can just, you know, change the font family to Arial, you say this Arial, and then it generates you the code here in this, uh, in this uh, cell that you, need, that you, that you can employ uh, or just you know, copy and paste uh, to your notebook uh, like this. And now we switch it back to Arial. Uh, and, and I need, really need to uh, make the, the background color look nicer because this is indeed very ugly. So I'm just going to try and use white. And two, three, four, five, six, yep. Okay, yeah, it's a lot nicer. And uh, I also don't want the fill opacity to stay this way. Uh, and, and the other thing we have, and I actually, uh, I, I gave the links here on the top of this notebook. So the styling parameters is the spreadsheet. And the illustrations, it's just like a Google Photos folder. This is for, uh, like a design for the UI that we will build very soon to help you with the chart, uh, the styling options. And here you have, like, it, it tells you what part is what, where the title is, where the padding is. And, and what, what are the different options? It's, it's actually very apparent when you go here. So like, what's the y-axis label and what's the marker label and, and, and things like that. So we, we try to help. Uh, it might not be super intuitive right now, but we, we try to help you with everything we can. 
Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of other uh, presets. So this is the bubble chart, for example. Looks really nice. Uh, this is the stack bubble chart. And here I turned on this feature called tooltip. So if I move on uh, to uh, hover my mouse over any element, I can see the value there. Then I use the, the stream graph here. Um, and uh, yeah, I, you know, the x-axis labels, they don't really look like very nice in this setup. So I'm just going to change them uh, by uh, changing the x-axis label font size and the angle. And oops, as you can see, they are now aligned like this, which is a lot better. Still, they are very uh, tightly packed. So I'm going to use an event. Uh, which will uh, set it so that only uh, years that are divisible by five remain on the chart. Uh, these events are still in JavaScript. Uh, we will we plan to add them in Python as well. All I'm trying to say here is that you can change any parameter of the chart using these events, and you can find examples of those as well. Now I'm, again, using the splitting feature that I already showed you before. Uh, and uh, here's the filtering part. So data filter, it's, you, you just add an expression. Again, still in JavaScript, but it's really easy to use. Uh, this one, I set it that the format is vinyl or streaming. And if I uh, run the chart like this, then we zoom in. So we filtered out everything else, and only the streaming and the vinyl uh, remained on the chart. Zooming and filtering is a really, really useful feature, I think. Uh, you just describe what you want to stay on the chart, and IPyVZoo will animate that. And actually, the zooming animations is really, really good to direct the, the, the audience's attention. So I, I would encourage you to, to play with that a lot. Um, and then I'm in, in one step, I'm going to just split uh, the, the, the filtering off and also the splitting. This is the step that my wife calls when the elephants kiss. Now you know why. And uh, yeah, and I'm going to turn this into a line chart uh, so you can obviously compare the trends and, and, and see what format was ahead of the other in, in, in different times. Uh, now we have another uh, sample notebook, uh, Playground 2. For the presets, the styling, and the filters, the data set is the same. Uh, you create the chart, and then again, I gave you a couple of like a preset here, uh, an option to set the custom styling, and some ideas to, to play with those, and, and you know a couple of other uh, other yeah opportunities uh, to play with. Actually, this one I think so. Feel free to to play with those. Those of you who don't want to do that, I'm going to just show you the content of this notebook as well. So here I'm creating uh, an empty chart showing the population of Africa. It really doesn't look very nice right now. Uh, so I think uh, maybe this, no, it, it, made, it, it made things worse. Um, yeah, I, it looks like there's some issues with the styling. Whenever I want to, something is like in a way that I don't want it to be, I go back to the original state and I recreate the chart. And then all the changes that I made on it will just go away. Uh, whenever you have an empty chart, by the way, so let me show you a couple of, let me show you one example. So I, I'm, instead of number format prefixed, I, I added something gibberish there. And if I run this cell, then I end up with an empty chart. So an easy way, because of uh, the JavaScript uh, charting engine being in the background, is to turn on the developer tools of your browser and go to console. And here it says that there is an error because this is not a valid name. Uh, for it's either grouped or prefixed uh, for the number value. And so you have a, a hint and an error message that you can use to, to figure out what's wrong with your chart. Whenever you end up with an empty chart, it's usually something with the configuration that you, uh, you, you didn't use quite well. It can be, I don't know, about the hierarchy of the styling thing. I, I, I ran into these error messages all the time, so I expect you to do the same. But uh, this, the, the, the console in the developer tool can help you a lot in, in figuring out what's wrong there. And so, yeah, the, and, and usually if you add it, like, now it still, didn't, it still doesn't work. So I just go and restart the whole thing, create the empty chart, and then create the, the working chart. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, that, that's about it. And next, uh, I'm going to turn this into a line chart, at least I hope. Yep, that shows already the uh, uh, subregion 
of Africa, so Eastern, Middle, Northern, Southern, Western Africa. Mm, now I'm going to turn it into a percentage area chart to, to show you how uh, the person, so like the, the population of the subregions of Africa changed over the year, but whatever. So you can use a, a stack column chart here instead, um, like this. And, but it means that, yeah, it, it also has the special option of stack by, so it can remain the same. And then it's a stack column chart. There are issues with the labeling in presets. So we add labels there, even if they cannot be seen very well. Uh, we, will, we will deal with those. You can actually make, them, make the labels disappear by turning them invisible. I will show you an example for that. Uh, but I know some, some of these presets don't work exactly the way you would expect them to do. Um, any questions right now? Um, should I leave you some more time to fiddle with this notebook or shall we move on to actually create our first story uh, with the presentation bit? Who wants the story? Okay, then we move on with the story bit. Uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll show you this one then later. IPyVisu story is the answer to your previous question. Uh, because we realized, uh, you know, people, data scientists, when they present something, they don't want to show notebooks. Business people freak out of notebooks. You know that very well. Now we know that too. And the other thing is, you know, I, I really don't know what cell went to run, and if I go back and, it, and I don't end up with the same chart, that can be an issue. So that's why we created this additional logic on top where you have slides that can contain one or multiple steps, and a story is basically a collection of these slides. Uh, and a step is the same thing that the chart was. So we're using the same syntax, everything is the same except you don't have animation options. I'm sorry about that. Uh, soon we will add those, but that's not a very commonly used uh, feature of our tool anyway. And the other difference is, is that you have to add all the data to the story uh, at first. So with, with the normal IPyVisu, with the chart, you, you could have had new data series and, and, and new, uh, new elements in, within the, your data frame. Here, you cannot do it. You have to add the whole data set in the beginning. So for example, it's not very good for when you want to put it together with streaming data and expect people to follow along as new data is coming in. I would use the original IPy visit to do that. In, in every other use case, it, it works pretty well. So again, another data set, uh, just a CSV file. You can find it, obviously, within the repo folder. Uh, it shows information about how much money the US federal government spent on uh, things uh, like titled R&D, like uh, health, space, science, energy, national resources, and defense. Um, and uh, yeah, I just create a style object here that I'm going to use throughout the story. This might be a good way if you want to you know, look, want to make the looks of your charts uh, really nice, so to, to set the styling separately and just, you know, uh, change this uh, a, as a separate object. I create the story object here, so not a chart, but a story. I add the data and the style to it, and I set the size. It's, it's very similar to what we did with the charts. Still, we end up with an empty story object, so that's why we don't see anything here. And now we start building our story. So initially, we just create a slide with one step in it, and as you can see, this bit is pretty much the same as we used with IPyVisu. So it has a data filter uh, so that we, we don't include the defense bit at the beginning. Everything else is there. So function doesn't equal defense. That's what this uh, filtering thing does. And then we use the stacked area presets. So we can use chart presets here as well, where uh, year is on the x-axis, the amount is on the y-axis, and it's stacked by function. And, in, and then we just call the add slide method of the story to add that slide to the story, and that's it. Next, we create another slide called slide two, where we turn the splitting feature off and change the title, and then we add that to uh, the, the story again. And we, we just switch on the tooltip feature, which we have again here, and we play the story. So this is how an IPyVisu story looks like. I just toggle full screen because we have a button to do that. It's on the bottom right corner. And now we have these buttons beneath the chart with which you can go back and forth between the slides that you've just created. I can use a clicker to do that. So you know you can 
actually build these views and on your own rhythm, the, while you're making your presentation, you can go through them and, and introduce and, and illustrate what you want to share uh, with, with your audience. Uh, that's really easy. You can go to the very end or to the very beginning of your deck, uh, and, and that's about it. Uh, so I'm going to just really quickly go through the other cells we have here, because I really would want you to you know, have a go at it. Uh, here I use, once again, this special handler that would only leave every fifth year on the chart uh, because it's very crammed, uh, the x-axis again. Uh, and here, uh, this is an important one. So I create a slide with multiple steps. As I said, slides can have either one step or multiple of those. So I create first an empty slide, and then I call the add step method of that empty slide and basically just describe a step. In, initially, I turn the splitting off, and then the next step, I will switch the filtering off, basically adding defense to the chart. And then I add the slide to the story, and I play it. So I rerun, I run this cell. Now, as you can see, only every fifth year is shown on the x-axis, and I have now three slides. So if I toggle full screen, and I can go. So this was the initial view. I go to the splitting feature, and here, first splitting off, and defense appears. As you can see, the US federal government spent quite a lot on defense as R&D uh, in, in the last 70 some years or so. Um, so in the next cells, I just switch on the stretched alignment that, as I told you, will we'll turn this, uh, so switch to percentage view, and then I'll just add some more uh, views that I'm going to quickly show you, but I, I just run all these cells here. Uh, and so as you can see, in all, all times, we, we add these slides to the story, and we, when we run the story play, we end up with the initial slide. So this is something that can be a little frustrating when you're building a story. So one of the features that we will release now is that you can add a, a special parameter to story play with which you can start the playing of the, uh, the story at any slide you want. And you can add like minus one, which means it's going to start at the last but one slide, which is usually the, the way you wanted it when, when you're building a story. And so how the story looks, if in case you're interested in what uh, the US federal government spent some money on, is, yeah, so we have space here. This is when you know you sent a person up to the moon. So the Apollo program. Uh, we we have health that is like increasing all the time, basically, um, and and everything else is rather small. We have defense that's always very huge, and uh, we we have obviously some. So this is I think uh, Reagan's uh, plan to to you know um, what, what was it called Star Wars? No. Well, you, you know the program but that, that made the, sorry, it was? Star Wars. It was Star Wars, maybe. OK, uh, and yeah, so it's, feel free to analyze it. There's, there are actually more insights in this data set. And then uh, next up, what I do here is I zo do use the filtering feature to zoom in on the first and the last year that's in the data set uh, and just regroup the elements so that you can compare which, co how, which component changed over the years. Uh, and you know it's, it's fairly easy to, to deliver a presentation like this. It's just one use case. Uh, there, there could be a lot of other stories. And we, we actually built some, but I would definitely love you to build some stories with this rather than us. So for example, I just found uh, a story on LinkedIn that uh, an actually a, a junior data scientist guy who lives in Spain uh, uh, built. It's a, it's a racing donut chart about oil production. So you know the, the donut chart is good to show uh, shares of of the total and how it changes over the years. It, it gives you a sense of that. Is it a good use case? Well, he built it, so it must be good for something. Uh, is it something I would show to business stakeholders? Eh. Uh, but you know, it it makes sense. It's nice. It's it's easy. And this is the sense that we would want to give you, that it's easy to build animated data stories and to share them. And lastly, here's this uh, export to HTML feature of the story. And that's the answer. So the last bit of the answer to your question, how you can export it. I, first, initially, I just set the size to make it like as big as possible, depending on where it, uh, 
where it's shown. And if I run this cell in the background, an HTML file is being generated. I just open it up on my computer here. Uh, it's basically the same thing, and, and it has a story in it. Uh, and, and you can you know, send it in an email or, or share it with anyone, upload it to a company server or whatever. Keep in mind that this file has the data in it. So uh, you're sharing the data uh, in its uh, own structured uh, row form when you're sharing an IPy visual story like this. Uh, you, you might not want to share anything publicly uh, that's uh, you know, your company uh, data. Yes, a question there. Thank you. Uh, and especially for the Python use case, I was just wondering, like, have you heard of observable? Uh, yeah, the question was, have I heard of observable? Yeah. Yes. Like, what's the differentiator between you guys and, and them, kind of? Um, like, so, a lot of similar stuff with, like, the D3 library. And OK, so to my understanding of observable, because I, I'm not an expert, uh, to tell you, to, to let you in on a secret, I, I'm not a developer, I'm not a data scientist. Uh, everything I'm telling you here is I, I learned along the way. Uh, so I know about Observable. It was, it's, it's a company that built a JavaScript notebook. It's founded by one of the original contributors of the D3 charting library, uh, Mike Bostock. And uh, he's like a, a super uh, senior and, and very well-known guy in the world of, of data visualization and, and, and JavaScript. Uh, usage and, and, and data storytelling. Uh, I, I guess, I mean, I haven't seen people using observable notebooks in my environment at all. So I, I don't know about the use case. Uh, to what my, I, so to my understanding, it's a good way to learn to use JavaScript. Uh, and, and they are actually heavy on that use case. So they, they like to promote it like that. You can build nice bespoke visualizations, but you have to know uh, D3 or at least a simplified version of D3. Now, I spoke with many people who use D3 because initially, as you know, we had a JavaScript charting solution. And the one thing they told me that it's, it was very painful for them to learn it, so they don't want to learn anything else. That's when we realized that uh, we have challenges in acquiring new users, even though uh, people using JavaScript and, and, and D3 uh, can build uh, very nice data visualizations. Y you can do anything with D3 that you can use, do with Visu, actually, but it would take you a lot more time and a lot more uh, expertise. So, and and uh, they, are, yeah, they, are, they only run in the browser. They are a special kind of notebook, whereas for us, notebooks are integration environments that come early on our path. Uh, I can show you, and, and I will show you, some examples of integrating our tool into Streamlit. I know people at Panel are working on integrating our tool there. Uh, that, that opens up new use cases for dashboards and, and reports. And, uh, and I have actually prototypes of integrating our thing into Excel uh, to, to change the pivot table editing experience there and, and a lot of other use cases. So, so our thing is, comes from a, a totally different perspective than where Observable is coming from. Uh, in the meantime, uh, you have actually another playground called Playground 3 which is about the story. Uh, feel free to, to fiddle with that while I answer some of these questions. Uh, it actually uses the same. So I, I'm just going to run all the cells here and, and show you the story at the end. Uh, yeah, a, a question over there. Two questions. Uh, Two questions. Uh, okay. Number one, uh, you showed using one data set. How do you use two or more than two data sets in one story? Uh, you cannot do that. As I said, within the story, you have to add the whole data set uh, at the beginning. Uh, you can build uh, two story objects and, and then uh, export them separately. And uh, yeah, we, we haven't really started uh, you know, just uh, concatenating uh, two stories together so that they change, uh, switch from one to the other. So you might have two HTML files at the end. But those are two separate stories uh, that you've just described. I think you answered my second question. Also, my second question was, if I want a slide from one story and a slide from another story and get them together, I will have to. Mm -hmm. So the second question was, what to do if I have a slide from one story and then one from another story? How to put them together? Right now, you cannot. Uh, we, we are working towards that as well. So we understand that, that storytelling and presentations are an important use case for, for Visu. And, I mean, even though I come from the country that uh, came up with the innovation called Prezi, which is an in-browser presentation tool, how many of you have heard about that? 
Okay, um, I'll tell the Prezi guys, they'll be happy about that. <laughs> but still, I mean, PowerPoint is the most widely used presentation tool, especially in a business setting, there is. So we are working on uh, making it easier for you to embed this kind of stuff within PowerPoint. Initially, it might be just uh, a way to, to uh, generate uh, really um, a video sequence that you can embed there and it won't work both ways. So you would only be able to go from start to finish and don't go back like, like with the interactive version. But uh, I know there are ways uh, to actually embed interactive content within PowerPoint and uh, we are going to focus on that in, in the next period. And that would obviously include use cases where you have more stories in one presentation. Uh, you might want to add uh, slides that don't even have uh, a Visu chart on, even though I, I don't really understand why you would want to have any slide without a Visu chart on it, but you might do. And uh, yeah, so another question over there. Yes, and I, I'll go through. Yeah, the, oh. so my question is, um, so when you, when you go and like inspect the elements for the HTML code, you can see the data, but is there a way to see the data in like a tabular format that's like easier to read and like kind of go through? Um, not with the exported HTML file. So obviously within the notebook you can do that. It's a pandas data frame. So there are plenty of tools you can use to, to, to look at and, and even manipulate the data frame. Uh, with the exported story, we, we haven't added anything like that. You know, we, we are trying to get away from the tabular data in, in some sense. We, we are focusing on the visualized data. Uh, one more question as of this, as of now, okay, and then we, we, I'll have time for all of your questions, but uh, I want to just move on in the meantime with the other bits. Yes, please. So the data size was 8 kilobytes, and then it exported to a, a 14 kilobyte HTML file. What's the standard ratio, like how big, you know, um, mm -hmm. So the question is about uh, the data set was like 8 kilobytes, and then the exported HTML was 40? 14. 14. So it's like six extra kilobytes. Woo, uh, I'm glad to hear that. So, you know, uh, I, we, we, we haven't really made benchmarks of that. Um, it, it shouldn't be so much bigger. So actually, you know, the engine itself is minified. You, you actually use the JavaScript engine that's, so the library itself is, is added to the HTML, uh, but it's, it's rather small and all the, uh, the views, so the charts there, are just basically this bunch of code uh, that the, the engine will generate uh, within the browser uh, using WebAssembly. So uh, they, it, there, there shouldn't be a size issue, uh, but yeah, it depends on the data set. That, that would contain most of the uh, info right there. Yeah, sorry, one, one extra question. Yes, sorry, no, no, no problem. Um, uh, I mean, it seems to work. Like, I just gave it the other data set, gave it uh, your first example. Yes, that's, mm -hmm. that's a great idea. I, I actually wanted to save uh, the announcement to the very end. So, the one, okay, can we use ChatGPT to generate Visu charts? Uh, so, this is an awful version. Uh, and, and it's not working that well, but uh, yeah, you can actually try using uh, ChatGPT uh, uh, to, to generate some of these charts. But so before I, I get lost in all the content that I prepped, I, I promise I will show it to you, but let's try and keep on track. So we have the third, this iPy Visus, no, this is the playground uh, that I created for you. Uh, actually the story in there is pretty simple. It shows the population of the world. Uh, between 1953 to 2018. So for those of you who haven't had the chance to play with it, it shows the population of the regions. It zooms in on Europe. It shows, I guess, uh, yeah, some of the regions and, and it don't look that straightforward. And now it zooms in on Eastern Europe, which is where I come from. And it switches on and shows you the countries. Uh, so actually I, I come from Hungary, Right now, uh, I, I, I mean, it should be a feature that if you click on one of the elements in the legend and it highlights, and we had that in the prototype, but it takes some more time. So we are not the biggest country in Eastern Europe. As you can see, it's, a, it's the Russian Federation and, uh, and, and Ukraine. But this is pre-war data, so 
I'm guessing, especially on the Ukraine part, it, it changed quite a bit, sadly. And now we can just see the, uh, um, the, like the, the high estimate for that region. And you can obviously uh, zoom in on any of the, so just feel free to test it with, with your own region or continent, with your own subregion, with your own country. Uh, I guess that's some of like a personalizable data story that you can build. And uh, so here comes the part where I thought, for those of you who want to give it a go and test IPyVisu, I prepped some data set, some, some data sets, some more than what we have planned, uh, like played so far. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I just added it in Playground 4. Uh, there's like the, the, the population data set, there's the music format data set. There's a data set about the profane words and deaths in Tarantino movies prepared by 538. So like there's bullshit in uh, time, minutes in, 0 0.61 time in Reservoir Dogs. It, it only contains information up to, uh, I guess, Reservoir Dogs, or like the first seven movies or something. So there are two missing. Uh, then I have another data set about superheroes and their powers. This is actually two data sets that I didn't have time to uh, like uh, join. Uh, one is about the superheroes, like their gender, their eye color, their hair color, their race and whatnot, and their superpowers. There's like a list of uh, 168 superpowers and uh, true and false uh, for those if they have them or not. Uh, we have the Titanic data set and here you can just, you know, I, I wanted to make it easy for you to get started with adding any data frame to a story, set the styling and, and start playing with it. Um, how many of you feel ready to, you know, start building their own data story while we're here or would like to give it a go? A couple of people, hands up please. Okay. Please start doing that, and we continue having a discussion and a Q&A with, with those of you who don't feel ready to do that. I, I'm totally okay. As I said, this is all very experimental. I actually think, looking at you, that, yeah, maybe let's make something like you should stand up and, and move around, okay? Stretch yourself. Can, can I ask you to do that? Usually, if, if we were in Hungary, I would ask you to start massaging the person right next to you, but I, 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 I'm afraid that it might be, I don't know, not okay I'm, I, culturally, or I don't know. So here, just please stand up and move around. Maybe you, it's, it's okay to, to stretch your, your arms like this, so do, do this kind of stuff. And yeah, I, I'm pretty sure, or yeah, do, do, do like this. It actually would do good for you. It, it's really not good for your body to, to sit in the same place for such a long time. My wife is a physiotherapist, so <laughs> she should know at least, and, uh, and, and I'm trying to keep up. Okay, so now we, we, we have the blood flowing. This is great. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sad to see, guys, um, guys, before, those of you who are not, who don't want to uh, participate before you leave, uh, there's one thing I usually do at the very end of my presentation, but uh, since I understand not everyone is, is interested in, in joining in with the interactive bit or with the building a story bit, uh, would you be okay that I make a selfie with a photo like where all of you is present? <laughs> this is my way of, of, of proving those who, my colleagues are back at home that I actually came here and did the bit. Uh, so I, I'll just do a quick one, okay? And, uh, for those of you who don't want to be like, uh, recognizable on the photo, first of all, you won't be. But uh, you, you can just look away or you know, move to the background. Uh, I mean, maybe this is the angle where I can get the most of you in the picture. Yeah, it is. And just. Stand on the table. Yeah, so I'm usually very bad at this, even though I'm doing it for quite some time. So uh, just say Vizu, OK? So one, two, three, Vizu. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll do a couple and we'll see how it goes. Thanks, I, I really appreciate that. So, um, then there are a couple of options to go from here. So first of all, those of you who want to build a story, please do. I would love to help you in that, in doing so. Again, my colleagues in the Slack would love to assist you with doing so, and, uh, and that's it. For all the others, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Usually people have a lot of questions at this point. And I'm also, I would be very happy to show you some of the things that we're working on, like the chat GPT integration and other stuff. And lastly, I have some stickers. So if that's your thing, please come and take as many as you want. Um, so let's, let's try and split it up. Who wants to build a story right here, right now, just to get a sense of IPAVIZU? Hands up once again. Okay. 
How many of you need any assistance from me at this point? Okay, please start working. Let me know if I can help you. If you want to team up with others, you're free to do that. Uh, I would love to see something, I don't know, a couple of slides. Yeah, yeah, please, please take some if you want. Um, let's make a vote of the other thing. Who wants questions? We, we have two options, questions first or new stuff first. Uh, so who wa those of you who want the questions to come first, raise your hands. Okay, one, two people. Those of you who want the new stuff to come first, raise your hands. Okay, so it's new stuff coming first. Then please start working on your stories and for the, all the others, I'll show you where we're heading. Uh, I'll, I'll make the list, so um, first of all, we are going to add animation options to stories. I, I, I really haven't expected an applause for that, but I just wanted to tell you. Uh, secondly, we will add a slider. So meaning that whenever you have a, uh, this, it's going to be right beneath these arrows and you can just move from one animation bit to the other. You can manually just scratch the animation and get from one face to the other. This is just one way of making animation really intuitive. Um, starting at, at a pre-selected slide number, I already told you that. We will redo the API to make it more Pythonic. I expect it to be done in the next one or two months because frankly, the, the biggest criticism that we get from people like you is that this is a dictionary based thing. I cannot use tab to understand what are the parameters, the specific chart types, and uh, I have to know what are the parameters of certain chart types, and, and that's not good. So like I'm, I'm used to a different kind of thing with matplotlib and with all the others. We get it, we understand, we are, not Python developers, especially myself, but uh, we, we, uh, the others neither. And uh, we, we are happy to adopt, we are happy to add the, this uh, sort of or new API for you. Uh, so we, basically you will have a separate method for each chart type with the parameters that you can ask for using tab. Um, we will also add I'm going for the most exciting ones a little later, okay? So that you still stay here a little bit. Um, we're going to add some integrations or some examples on the side that are called analytical operations. We're going to release that hopefully next week. So one of the things that we realized is that people don't have too much experience with building animated data stories, which frankly is quite understandable, uh, at least until now. Uh, and uh, we really try to help you in, in making your first stories. And we realized that actually many of these transitions, these animations we make are actually analytical operations. So things that you do with your data, you check the distribution, you, you see the total, uh, you drill down. Uh, you want to see the, 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 the share, so the percentages. Uh, you want to compare bits and things like that. And uh, so we, we actually made uh, these transitions for you. So for example, these are the distribute examples. And similarly to, to all the animated examples, all the other examples, you will have these animations uh, and these, these, these examples there for which you will have the code and, uh, and, and some explanation on what's going on within the chart, and you would be able to just replay the animation to understand what's going on here and, and employ them uh, to, your, to your stories. Uh, the other logic I would want uh, our team to, to put together is uh, to go via chart types and not via analytical operations. So to see all the operations for a line chart, for example, because you know, that's, what easy, that's what is easiest for you to understand. Like at this state, I have a line chart. What can I do with the line chart? Impress me, give me some ideas, things like that. There's a question. Can you, uh, can you do like a, can you do geographic charts um, yet in the zoo? Uh, the question was, can we do geographical charts? So maps, basically. Yeah. Not right now, but we're on it. So we can extend the functionality of our generic chart morphing engine uh, to maps. So maps are also, uh, you know, they are, a special, they use just special shapes uh, from our perspective. 
And uh, actually, so there are plenty of things that, that actually worked really well in the prototype. And at one point, our CTO implemented a GeoJSON import into Visu. We weren't able to, to transpose from a normal type of chart to a, a GeoJSON, but it, would, it could have been done. But you know, we, we started focusing on the JavaScript API. And we really have more things to build than we can we, we, can, we have a team for. Uh, that's, why, that's one of the reasons why we open sourced our thing. So we really would encourage you to, to uh, come and, and contribute and, and you know, integrate our tool to new environments. Actually, most of these uh, integrations that you saw were done by others. Uh, in some cases, people we don't even know personally or not even, we haven't even been in touch. They just made the integration and, 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 and uh, yeah, committed it to our repo. We, were, we are obviously very happy, happy to see something like that. Okay, uh, I promise you some other new stuff, right? Um, so, um, yeah, the, the, the GPT part, but firstly, Streamlit. Streamlit integration, so there's, IPAV is a story works out of uh, box in Streamlit, and it works really nicely. Actually, if you go to blog.streamlit.io, you can find a rather new piece that, uh, that was just released six days ago. It was written by me. It's a very, very long introduction of using, and but it's a step-by-step -step tutorial, basically, of using IPyVisu story in Streamlit. It, it uh, introduces the logic that you're already uh, familiar with, but uh, then, then it just, at the end, shows you some apps where IPyVisu is already integrated. So this is an app here. Uh, let me just open it up in a, in a separate window. Um, here we go. Um, so basically, this is an interactive story in the sense it's all about the world population thing, once again, that you're already familiar with. So this shows the world population in the past and how it's going to, by region, how it's going to change in the future. Uh, and then it, uh, it shows the components side by side. And then, uh, yeah, the percentage wise. And it zooms in on Africa. But uh, you can actually select. I don't know, Latin America and the Caribbeans instead. And uh, yeah, you know, IPAVISU restarts the presentation, regenerates it, but restarts it in the first slide. But if I hit this button, it's just going to skip the intro slides and go to the part where we zoom in on Latin America and the Caribbeans. And then what we did here actually was we, uh, yeah, we show the changes uh, based on the different scenarios. And then we add a uh, new. Uh, data that shows how many births and deaths are forecasted uh, to the, these uh, periods by the UN. So, you know, births are the, the, the metrics that, that make this chart go up, and deaths and negative net migration are the things that make it go down. And, and this story is about uh, comparing the different forecasts uh, by region in terms of births, deaths, and migration. Check it out. But more, even more interestingly, there's a senior data scientist working at Streamlit called Zachary Blackwood. Uh, I can't praise him enough because he built a bi-directional component of IPyVisu into Streamlit, basically uh, making a couple of nifty features available within Streamlit and IPyVisu. So here's, for example, a racing bar chart, and you can interactively switch between the different years with this slider. Even, so you can, you can even make more complex interactive reports or data explorers now within Streamlit using, uh, using this bidirectional component. It's just one Python file. It's basically if else things, uh, how you add these widgets. So for example, this is the music revenues data set that you're already familiar with. I'm just going to extend uh, the year here. I'm going to change instead of uh, the, the actual value to adjust it for inflation or to switch to volume or to switch to the format, so aggregate it by format, and then uh, like, let's add all the formats, and, uh, and you know, there was something wrong, and then sort it by value. It's, it's still in the making. And even more importantly, there's the download story button here. So you have an interactive animated data report here. I just download this report here, and as an HTML file, and I open it up, and I, I don't know about the glitch that happened before, but yeah. So here we have an iPad with a story that anyone using Streamlit 
can generate without having to see one line of Python code. So I just you know, clicked around in, a, in an interactive explorer and I created a presentation for myself. This is an important step forward because it shows what Visu is capable of and what we're working towards to intertwine exploration and storytelling. I, 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 right now, these activities are totally separated. You, you have to analyze the data. This is what happens to you all the time. You analyze the data, and then as a separate act, you start building charts to, to actually share the insights with others. Whereas our paradigm is that analyze the data visually, and then you will have the story as a byproduct. So that's, that's where we're coming from, and this is, this is an important first example of that. Uh, and yeah, we have the, the, the chat GPT alpha thing that uh, I, I will try to use, okay? This is the second time I'm using it. So I, I'm just adding a file, a CSV file to it. Uh, for a change, it's gonna be the music history thing. Uh, that's what I'm most familiar with. Uh, I have to change this to dimension because uh, yeah, it so like it thinks that year is a measure. We know why. And describe what we should see on the chart. Give me, give me a suggestion, please. What, what, should it, what should it build? It might not work, so it's an awful version, but give me one suggestion. You know the data set already. It's the music format. How much revenue it generated over the years in the US? Line chart or revenue over time? Line chart? Revenue over time. Revenue over time, OK. Give me a line. Chart of revenue over time. Yeah. I see. Yeah, thank you. Suspense. It's built in. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a built in feature. And we have a line chart of revenue over time. Excuse me? Which version of ChatGPT are you using? 3.5 or 4? Uh, I think it's 4. Okay. But uh, as you can guess, uh, it wasn't me engineering the prompt. OK, uh, one more, because it costs us money, you know. <laughs> uh, bubble chart uh, with year colored by uh, Bubble chart with year? Uh, year and the size of the bubble of revenue colored. Uh, revenue color is format. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's something not done by ChatGPT that uh, IPAVISU will, will animate between these charts that it builds. There we go. OK, my, I think uh, the favorite uh, sample uh, that uh, my CTO built uh, or gave to me is like something interesting for a 40-year-old. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's see what we see. <laughs> mm. um, it's yeah, it, it did the same. It was, it was, it was revenue by year for DVDs. So it's it's actually DVD revenue. I, I don't know why it thinks that that forty year olds are interested in DVD, but that's a that's a bias that ChatGPT definitely has. Um, all right, um, so. I mean, I would, I would love to see some of the stories that you people build. Uh, if you want to show it to the others, uh, I, I would love to see that. For everybody here, there's just one last favor that I would like to ask you, is to go at this link and spend two or three minutes of your time right now, if possible, because this is where you have the most recent experience with what we do, and answer a couple of questions for us about data storytelling, about your job, about IPyVisu, about Streamlit. Uh, I, I would really appreciate that. I mean, thanks. In the meantime, I'm happy to answer more questions while you're, it's, most of them are just multi, like, you know, you have to pick one option. So it's, it's, it's gonna be fairly easy for you to, to go through. You're so good to me. Yeah, please. From a security standpoint, you said the HT, uh, HTML export had all the data, right? So anybody that has that link um, have access to the data? Mm -hmm. So the question was that from the security standpoint, the exported HTML file has all the data in it, and that it's, it's a security risk, as you said. Yes, it is. Uh, so 
in many cases, uh, what I suggest to people, especially when they want to share uh, the stories that they built online in social media or whatnot, is to make a video of it. To use any kind of screencasting software, we all have those, or most of us have those on our computers. Uh, actually, Streamlit has one built in in their platform. Uh, and, and you can just record the video uh, of, of, of your story, and obviously that won't have the data itself in it. Yes, there was a question in the back. Uh, mm -hmm. Question was about the, the guidelines for maximum data set size. Um, we, I mean, we, we tested it quite intensely with tens of thousands of data points uh, being visualized, and it, it ran pretty well. So uh, with a C++ engine in the background and with using WebAssembly, it's, it's really robust already. We, we have some ideas to improve it. And also to use, uh, I always messed it up, but no, we, we will use OpenGL uh, to make it even more uh, quick and robust. Usually you don't want more. So visualizing more than 10,000 data points don't really make much sense to the viewer. There are special cases, but yeah, in, in most cases uh, that should be enough. There's a question in the back. Mm -hmm. I need to compute the counts ahead of time and pass it uh, a data frame that has the x and the y, and then say, OK, you're going to do a bar chart on this. Mm -hmm. I tried to rephrase the question the way I understood it, and let me know if that's correct. So. Uh, this, our tool was compared to other charting solutions where you actually create the data frame or like simplify the data frame and do the aggregation yourself that you add to the chart. Usually those are like that might, might be the original data frame and, and uh, these are especially like in many cases these are just small smaller data frames compared to the data that you're working with whereas our case is different. Is that right? Is this what you mentioned? The other way around. How do you specify the like, aggregation function? Ah, the aggregation option, specifying the aggregation option. OK, sorry about that. Yeah, that would have been the other angle, but I wasn't sure. So right now, we aggregate the data automatically, and that's the only thing we do. But there is a new version of Visu coming up via which you will be able to do different operations, like uh, show the, the average, or the min, the max, and, and things like that. So basically, a built-in. Pandas manipulation option within uh, the, the, the Wizu uh, uh, tool, uh, if, if that's correct, or, or that's one way to put it. The reason why we have to do it, and that's important to, to note, that with every other charting solution, you have usually one view of the data set that you want to show, one chart. With ours, is, is totally different. You have multiple views of the same data set that you want to put into a story or a chain of animation. And because of that, we have to do uh, the aggregation within uh, the Visu part and, and some data manipulations there. So it, the, the, the use case is different. And thus, we, we cannot employ uh, the data manipulation logic that, that other charting solutions are, are easy to, so to, to use, for, so are easier to, to employ in them. Yeah, yeah. And so if I wanted to do a count, I would make a column that's just a column of ones, and then I would. Okay, the question was if, uh, I'm sorry to repeat that it's for the recording part. So the question was if uh, every value is aggregated as sum, and then the count part is like I have to add, you have to add a new column with one in each uh, row. And that's the case right now. So that was in the example with the Titanic data set. Uh, that I, I, before I loaded it, I, I added this extra column there. I, it, it, yeah, it's an early stage thing, and there are some extra hoops you have to go, uh, go through. No, no, thanks. I mean, I, I'm just you know, trying to, I, I think it, it's a fair point. We're working towards uh, addressing it, uh, make it easier for you to use this thing. And another question over there. How are you playing monetize? Is it? 
uh, plan of monetization. So good news, we don't want to charge the data scientists. <laughs> now, honestly, uh, we, we, we never intended, and we know that you are used to uh, using uh, free tools, and we also know that you have a high level of expertise in what you do, and, and you, that's why you can already use our tool. There are plenty of people out there, I would call them Excel users, or basic business users, who don't have the kind of expertise that you do, and for whom these capabilities, visual exploration, easily building animated data stories, combining these two things together uh, would be valuable enough uh, to, to get their wallets open. So we want to build a, a SaaS tool, for example, that's like the main framework of what we're thinking about with integrations into Excel, for example, and, and export options to PowerPoint. And uh, then you can put a price tag on that. That's, that's for sure. Yes, please. Uh, what license do you use? Uh what license do we use? Apache 2.0. All righty, we, we have a couple of minutes left. Yes, please. Just a brief, I'm not sure if it was asked before, I was still in the but uh, the streamlet, uh, when will that be available and what's the data security situation there? Um, so, uh, the, the question is about the streamlit bit and when it would be available. So, funny thing, if you go to intro to Visu in streamlit.app uh, and, you know, check out the repo behind, it's already available. We just haven't started promoting it yet and you can expect some things to go sideways since it's alpha. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an add-on. It's, it's a component within, it's a bi-directional component written by uh, Zachary that you have to clone into the repo that you use uh, in order to use IPyVisu in this interactive manner. Otherwise, uh, the Streamlit has the basic logic of refreshing the app all the time, and basically this bi-directional component addresses that issue along other ways, along other nifty features like, uh, for example, drill down on click. So you can, if I click on this bar, we are just going to zoom in and see and, and drill down to that component. That's just one example. So there are some other features. You, you can get actually data out of, uh, out of it and, and, and have information about the marker that's just been clicked and, and use it somewhere else. Uh, but, but you can use it. Uh, just look for streamlit hash uh, visu uh, in, on, on GitHub and, and you'll find the repo. Uh, we we're actually would be happy for you to, to try and test it and let us know uh, where it went sideways. Any of you who started fiddling with the uh, with, with IPyVisu story right now, can we see it? Is there something you've built so far? I just maybe just one transition that we can take a look. Uh, if you do, please just upload it to GitHub somehow and give me the link because it would be hard to change the laptop right now. Uh, and uh, no, really, because you know, uh, of the recording thing. But uh, I, I would love to show that. Maybe, maybe you don't have it yet. I'll have to wait for another workshop to make that happen and make our stuff easier to use. Um, we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Yes. So for the ChatGPT integration, are you planning to open source like, so, that's, so someone could bring in their own uh, like open AI API key and then like run it um, and, and like give it a try? A uh, question about the ChatGPT integration, whether we plan to open source it and uh, enable people to use with their own OpenAI API key. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it, this is a fun project. Uh, I, I actually have, do you want to see another fun project that we're doing as a closing session? Uh, I, actually, that's what, uh, I mean, our, so the person with the original idea behind Visu doesn't know how to code at all. He hates coding, he hates spreadsheets. So you can imagine his state of mind when we released an open source JavaScript library and then a Python tool for data scientists. And even with that, he has already written more than, I don't know, 500 examples in JavaScript and Python using our tool, but still, it's very hard for him to, to get acquainted with this. But um, let me, yeah, I think uh, it's going to be only in this browser. Um, so this is, again, just a fun demo 
that uh, our CTO put together. And, and it shows uh, how, basically how flexible our engine is now. And, and we're approaching the thing when we're building on products for the end users is, I think, pretty close. So we call it the swipe demo or the data explorer. Here you have a data set. That's one chart uh, generated of it. it. It doesn't matter what data is there. Uh, th I have a touch laptop. You have to know that. And hopefully, yeah, you can see my, my finger swiping through the screen. So I'm just swiping through different values here until my ad block is being <laughs> updated. Um, sorry about that. So I'm just swiping through his things like this. And uh, I can also change the categorical series on the x-axis. I'm just going to switch to a data set that only has positive values. I can add one more category on the color scale. And I can change that with a swipe, too. And, and then you know keep on changing the categories here. I can add another continuous value like this. And, and yet another one that gets on the size. And now I can just compare how things align if I keep on changing the values or keep on changing the categories. And uh, so imagine what kind of tool can be built on this technology for anyone to go through a new data set while, I don't know, sitting on the toilet with their phones in their hands <laughs> or something like that. So th this is what we're working towards. I'm here all throughout the conference. I would love to have your feedback, uh, talk about new use cases, ideas, uh, get to know why our thing sucks and what we should do to fix it. So I'm, I'm really not here to fish for compliments. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to get that kind of feedback as well. And thanks again for, for accompanying me on this 90 minutes of a workshop and, and for your attention. Thank you. <laughs>